The HBO show The Last of Us puts a lot of faith in the writing of its source material. The TV show doesn't change much from what the video game planned. That's not a mistaken way to feel. The Last of Us, a PlayStation 3 game made by Naughty Dog in 2013, was the first game to look more like a high-quality TV show or movie than almost any other game before it. Players took on the roles of Joel, a long-suffering father who became a black market smuggler after a terrible tragedy at the start of a zombie outbreak, and Ellie, a 14-year-old orphan who has only ever lived in a militarized America full of zombies. Almost a decade after the first game came out, Pedro Pascal will play Joel and Bella Ramsey will play Ellie. Both of these roles will be played by new actors. In The Last of Us, the zombies are not dead. Instead, they are people who have been infected by a supercharged version of the real Cordyceps fungus, which takes over the brain functions of animals, mostly insects. In The Last of Us, humans can get sick from this fungus and turn into crazy hungry monsters. Unlike a pandemic caused by a virus, there is no vaccine. HBO's take on the video game property finally answers the question of what would happen if a big budget TV or movie adaptation stayed true to the source material and even repeated the same scenes, lines, and big story beats? Because that's what the show is all about. There are parts of the first season that are line for line copies of important parts of the game. The nine episodes have the exact same plot points of the original game and take place in almost the same places. People who know the game by heart will probably be able to say some lines in the show as they are being said. Over the years, I've played the game dozens of times. As I watched the show, I felt like an old stage actor because I saw other people read lines I knew by heart and do the same actions I had done in 2013 and many times since then. Because The Last of Us was already set up and written like a TV show, HBO's version is ready to work. And it does. It does most of the important scenes well and with a lot of care. In some ways, it makes a story better because we now know more about the lives of some of the characters. For example, the brothers Sam and Henry, who were already important in the game, get a much longer story. That shows their situation and why they want to join Joel and Ellie. They feel less like characters in a side quest in a game, especially now that their relationship makes the similarities between them and Joel and his older brother stronger and clearer. Most people who like video games complain that TV or movie versions of games rarely stay true to the source material. Just ask any Resident Evil fan who had to watch Mila Jovovich use Kung Fu to get through six movies that barely had anything to do with the game. More recently, the Halo community was very upset with Paramount's Halo show in 2022 because it changed the characters' motivations and personalities in a way that was not true to the game. The HBO show The Last of Us, which was adapted by Chernobyl showrunner Craig Mazin and Naughty Dog co-president Neil Druckmann, is unlikely to get as much hate. Instead, the show gives fans what they have been shouting for. An adaptation that looks, sounds, and feels like the original. It works because The Last of Us had already won over a lot of players and is still one of the most acclaimed video game series ever. Mazin and Druckmann's reworked TV version of the game is not a group story like The Walking Dead, just like the game. Instead, it is very clear on the relationship between two people who don't want to be together. The Last of Us is less about zombies and more about a group of friends going on a road trip. The monsters aren't even the main point, and just like in the game, it shows all of this in a straight-faced way without any irony. Even though it stays true to the book in many important ways, there are some big changes and additions to the characters. It seems like the show is trying to be less cynical than the game. The best part of the whole season is an early episode in which the plot, characters, motivations, and relationships between two characters are completely changed. In the game, tragedy, bitterness, and anger marked the end of these characters' stories. The show, on the other hand, treats them with much more respect and dignity. That kind of story couldn't have been told in the game. The real magic of the game was that players could take on the roles of Joel and Ellie. This meant the story could only be told from their point of view, or else the audience would lose control. 
But in the show, the camera and writing are finally freed from the two main characters. This lets new side stories grow and helped us learn more about the world and the people in it. If you know the game, you might not think of enchanting and romantic when you think of this story. But HBO's new version tells a loving story in a world without love or life. Pascal and Ramsey also get along really well. As someone who knew how Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson played Joel and Ellie in the original game, I thought the HBO versions were still true to the characters. The game focused on the most important parts of their journey, but the show shows glimpses of the quieter, less important parts. Again, this is more kind than the game could have let it be. Joel and Ellie can talk more and sometimes smile and laugh because they don't have to do as much in an action video game. Pascal and Ramsey are at their best when the show is building up to its most important scenes. Here, the heartbreaking first 15 minutes of the game are shown, and Pascal's performance highlights the growing pain that would turn a person's soul into something small and weak. Even though I knew what was going to happen and it did, I still had to cry. And Ramsey's time on Game of Thrones helped her prepare to play Ellie as a young girl who was born into a world that doesn't care about keeping her innocent. The man who doesn't want to be Ellie's guardian is a broken man, which is a bad sign for her future. The story of the first game is told through the whole season. Each episode lasts about an hour, so the show doesn't feel rushed. In the show, many of the emotional cliffhangers from the first game's episodes are repeated. Now, a new generation of TV viewers will join the debate that players of the game have been having over character choices and what it means to do the right thing in a broken world for the past 10 years. There's a nagging feeling that some small changes were made to dialogue just for the sake of change, and it's hard for me, who's played the game for years, to tell if they're better or not. My first impression is that they're neither worse nor better, just different. People who know will notice, and like me, they might wonder why these lines were changed when the original ones said the same things and made the same kind of feelings. But as someone who likes the original game and what it did, The Last of Us on HBO is still a fun and interesting ride. Through a classic adventure story with actors who do justice to the original version. Comparing the two stories and the artistic choices made to make the show different from the game, I have to say that sometimes the HBO version steals the show.